Hello, my name is Sonia. I'm from Sonia's Quilts and Embroidery. And by accident, about five years ago, I started making memory quilts. I was asked by a friend to make one out of her mother's clothes. Her mother had passed away. And she didn't want to get rid of them, but she did not know where, you know, any place that really would want them or anything. So I wound up making her two kings, I mean, a king and two queens out of uh, her mother's gowns and, and um, house coats. And um, so from, I thought, well, that turned out pretty good. So I think I can. So then one day somebody brought me some t shirts. So I um, started making t shirt quilts a little over five years ago posted an ad in the paper, made about 15 that first year, and that was 2013, made about uh, 15 that year, and I thought I was doing really good. The next year, word got around, did about 75. And then the third year, which had been 2015, uh, it jumped to about 300 maybe, and then uh, 2000, that's not right. Yeah, that's right. It's been that long ago. Anyway, uh, now I do about 400 of these a year. I do about uh, probably half and half t-shirt quilts and custom quilts. So you can look me up on Facebook, Sonia's Quilts and Embroidery. I have a, about a thousand quilt portfolio on there. Of uh, You could go in there look on the photos and see the different quilts I have made over the past five years. I don't post every picture because... I do so many t-shirt quilts that I think they start all looking the same. So I don't post all of those, but there's a lot of good examples of my t-shirt quilts on there. But I have already done two videos uh, on the t-shirt quilt. One was how to cut out your t-shirts. I explained in depth exactly how I do that. And so your t-shirt should be cut out already. And uh, I've done another video on how that I uh, set up the uh, cutting mat for the uh, strips and the little blocks to set the shirts together. So now we're at the point of putting it all together. And I'm sorry it's taken me like this long to get to this video, but it's, uh, you know, that time of the year, I'm really, really, really busy with the embroidery and with all these memory quilts, trying to get them done by Christmas. So I got this one down to the point that I've already got three rows set together. We're gonna set the last two rows together, together. And I'm going to show you exactly how I do this. And I appreciate you watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Uh, please give me a thumbs up. And hit that post notification button so that when I have a new video coming out that you will be notified of that new video. So I'm going to turn my uh, camera down to my machine and show you exactly how we do this. And there, there. if you'll notice, I'm going to turn this down, I'm going to show you, I do not have any stabilizers, did not iron any kind of interface on the back of my shirts. And the reason that happened is because, frankly, it never entered my mind to do that. When I first started making these, I never first had the first thought to go and buy a bunch of interfacing and iron on the back of these shirts. So that's why I have people that will drive 200 miles to my shop to bring me their shirts because I do not use stabilizer. My quilts are very soft. They're uh, very comfortable. They're not stiff. Uh, and people drive from Nashville, Birmingham, South Alabama. They drive from everywhere to bring their shirts to me. They don't trust the mail, apparently, but a lot of people do mail them and drop them off here at the store. And uh, so, yeah, I do about a um, couple hundred, maybe a little more than that of these per year. So I guess that makes me an expert on T-shirt quilts. So here we go. I'm going to turn the uh, camera down and show you, put you right at my needle. Okay. Notice I have a little threading error here and I don't want don't want that so let me fix that right quick I have a commercial uh, German made um, Dirk Op D-U-R-K-O-P-P -P -P Adler A-D-L-E-R 281 and that's what I that's what I use I used to use Brothers, I love Brothers. I support Brothers 100%. I have a brother, brother six needle, and I love Brothers. But as many t-shirt quilts as I was doing, I was burning up about five Brothers per year, and I just cannot take those and take them back. Say my machine's not working. 
after I done put it through what I've put it through, um, I just would throw them in the garbage and go buy another one. So, I had an idea last year that I thought, well, maybe I could get a commercial machine. And uh, I was a little afraid because a, a, com a commercial straight needle is typically used for very heavy stuff. And so I was a little afraid, but I contacted somebody. Uh, it's called Your Equipment in Lexington, Alabama. And uh, they set this machine up just for what I do. Now, this machine will sew something as, as, as delicate as this uh, thinner cotton fabric. It, I can sew canvas on it. Uh, I have uh, sewn it, like four layers of canvas at one time, and it just goes right through it like butter. So this machine is like having a brand new car. I love it. I don't know if I could function without it. Okay, so you can see there's no stabilizers on the back of my shirts. It's just the shirts. So... And um, that's why a lot of people, I think, charge seven, $800 to do a t-shirt quilt because I can imagine it would take a week, a good hard, at least hard, hard, at least hard two or three days to iron interface on the back of each one of these and then cut them out. It would be, that would be very labor intensive. So, but like I said, the reason I don't is because it never entered my mind to start doing that. That's the, that's the simple fact of the matter is I never thought about it. I just uh, learned how to make them without that. And so there we go. All right. So we're going to judge this t-shirt. Also, all of my shirts are stacked up uh, so that they are right side up. And I only sew to the right side of this t-shirt. And there's a reason for that. If you start sewing one on the right, one on the left, and back and forth, you're going to have a, it, it, you'll have a job keeping everything straight. So I recommend that you sew only to the right side of the shirt, and we're going to do all of them on the right side. And when we get ready to start setting the, the rows together, you won't have to worry about checking to see if one is right side up or one is upside down. You know, they all just, they all just go together a lot nicer that way. Okay, so... This shirt is it's a pretty good grade of knit. It's not real flimsy. It's it's um and of course the knit loses its integrity whenever you cut it. Just like a sweater would lose its integrity when you cut it. These t shirts lose a lot of their integrity when it's cut. And so we judge our shirt. This one's pretty good. It's a pretty good quality, it's a pretty good weight, but I am gonna steal set my strip off of my edge just a little bit and all these things i'm telling you will make more sense as they go along and this shirt it's about like the first one i did now you'll get into shirts that may cost a lot of money they're not they're not what you would call a cheap shirt they're, they cost a lot of money they may be a designer t-shirt but the quality of the knit is just not there and I, I would you know and if I run across any of those in this stack then I will show you and as you can see I am still going just to the right side of the shirt and all another point always sew with your strip on top never 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 sew with your t-shirt on top. Always have your knit next to the feed dogs on your machine. Those feed dogs help feed that knit through there. If you did it the wrong, the other way where your knit's on top, it's just gonna push and push and push and push until this strip is not gonna be long enough. So this, if you will cut your strips, like I, I told you in the other video, which they, these are five by 14 and a half. The shirts are cut at 14 inch square. Always cut it 14 inch square. Now, there is times when you'll do some shirts that's got a lot bigger graphics. Some of the concert shirts, the Hard Davidson shirts, and you may have to change the size of your squares. But for most high school t-shirts, 99% of the time, this 14 inch square pattern will uh, cut out the graphics on a high school shirt. But as you can see, with my knit down, it did my it the green um, cotton came all the way down to the edge of the shirt on both ends, no overhang. 
Okay, this shirt is a is a not is a nice made shirt. You know the shirts I'm talking about, the ones that are kind of gauzy. I'm not gonna say the name brand, but they may cost thirty dollars, but they're just not the, they're just not a very good quality knit. And you can use those, but if you use those that are a lesser quality knit, kind of thin t-shirts, you would need to go in a little further from the edge than I've been going. This is my black line where I drew off my pattern. And we're going just slightly off of that, maybe a quarter inch off of that. And with those shirts that are really, really stretchy like that, you would need to go a little further in. Now on this shirt, I'm going to deliberately sew this one off to the close to the edge here so that I can show you how to fix. If your shirt is too wide, when you get start getting ready to set it together and get your quilt all set together, um, I'm gonna show you how to fix that. Right in the middle of making your quilt, if you have if your shirt's too wide when you start setting it together, I'll show you how we can fix that. This is a very good quality shirt, so we're gonna not go off of, about that about this much. Just a very just a very small amount. I usually cut my shirts out um, during the at night while I'm trying to relax and me and my, my husband we like to watch these series on Netflix and we'll get do a binge watch on the weekends and I may cut out 15 t-shirt quilts. All right, now that we've got all of our shirts with the strips sewn down the side, we'll stack them back up with the, right, with the strips on the right side. This quilt is going to be four wide and five shirts long. So when we do that, okay, if your if your quilt is going to be five shirts wide and and then five rows long, what I would do uh, before I start doing this part is I would pick, take off five shirts and set those aside because with the five shirts you have an uneven amount. So you would. Before you've known what you've done, you've sewn them all up. So I would take the five, the odd numbers off. I would take the five for the, for one shirt per row, which would be five shirts, and set those aside so that when you get uh, your four sewn together, you'll have that one that you can pull and make it a five-row quilt. I hope that makes sense. If anything I say doesn't make any sense, you're welcome to uh, message me and comment, and I will try to answer your questions. All right. Now... We have got, we didn't even have to look to see if that shirt was right side up. We're sewing these two together. And again, we're going just off that line just a little bit to allow for stretching. And we're going to sew those two together. And you can also, before you do this, I just do them, when they're sent to me and a customer wants me to make a t-shirt quilt, I just do a random, I don't even look to see which shirt goes where. Uh, it, that's too time consuming and uh, I just don't do that commercially but if you're making this for yourself or your child or your grandchild whatever and they you want them in a certain order uh, you would need to do that at this point you would need to do that so that you would um, be able to have them laid out just exactly like you want still we are keeping the t-shirt to the uh, to the bottom we always do that no matter, I always keep the knit next to the feed next to the feed dogs. I don't know if that's a technical name for it, but that's what my grandmother called them. So that's what I'm gonna call them too. It's the little grippers that that pushes the fabric under the needle. All right. At this point, when I get this one sewn on. I should have four sets of two, and then we're just going to um, continue to do this until we have as many in the row as we want. So if I sew these together one more time, then I should have my four, four in a row. Okay, let's see if you can see this. Let me don't look at my floor. 
was so hard. Clean, clean little. But I've got two shirts in each section now. And I'm going to take another section. And so two of these together, we should have four then. And this is the point where if you've got that odd shirt laying aside, because you have a five, a five row shirt by five, you would add the fifth shirt on here to make you to make it five. Now I'd pick up while I've got this still attached to the machine. I pick up the end here because you'll have this end, this shirt that's not going to have anything on it. And because with each row, you have four shirts and five strips. So this one needs a strip on this end. This is the left side of this shirt. So to close off this edge, we're going to put a strip here. Okay, and we will have this row done. This row is finished. See, we have shirt one. Shirt two, shirt three, and we have shirt four, and none of them is upside down. They're all right side up. And that, that's just a really good, helpful hint on uh, sewing the strips to the shirts in the beginning. Is always do it on the right side. Always the right side of the shirt. When you're looking at the shirt, set it in the sewing machine, sew it on the right side. And then we have one more here. Don't even have to look. We already know it's going to be right side up. Turn it over to get the knit down. And we will sew these two together. Leave it on the machine. Pick up this shirt on the very end. And we're going to sew another one. And this shirt is kind of thin and stretchy now that I look at it a little better. And also, if you get down here to the end and your shirt is sticking out just a little bit, that's okay. This is not going to be, a t-shirt quilt is not considered a piece of art. Uh, it's going to be a t-shirt quilt and I will show you how to make that all work. Next, all of our rows are sewed together. We have five rows. We have five rows of four. This is going to be a full size. This is a sister quilt. So I've got one exactly like this to do for the other sister. And this is going to be a four rows, four wide, five long. And five long is long enough. I make my quilts 180 inches long in anything from full queen king they are 180 inches, 180 inches long. So five, five shirts long with the uh, uh, strips in between, that is plenty long enough. You just have to worry about your width. And at the end, after, if you've only got 20 shirts and you make it four by five and you want a king size, either need to make your strips wider in between the shirts or you need to plan on putting some kind of a uh, sashing all the way around your design and it's something that coordinates with the colors that you're using and um, make your quilt the desired size and that works i have to do that all the time all right so now we're going to take our other strips oh and i don't know if i mentioned this or not i may not have when i showed you in the video how to cut your strips with every every strip you cut you're going to have one on the fold and you're going to have two that are not you've got one that will have this fold line Oh, I like to use these pieces to to uh, sew to the t-shirts because sometimes these are sewn on the fold, maybe a fraction of, of an inch shorter or longer. And I'd rather that be on the side of the t-shirts than on the top and the bottom of the t-shirts when we get ready to set it together. So that's really a really good hint. I like to use those the ones that are cut on the fold. And you can iron them if you want to, but I would still keep these separate and sew them onto the, side, the right sides of the t-shirts. Okay, so now we have our strips. A big pile of strips here, and we have our squares. This shirt, this quilt is going to be charcoal and green. And I gotta do another one, like I said, exactly like it. We're gonna take our strips. 
and we're just going to chain. We're going to chain uh, a whole bunch of these together. The reason I like to chain these is because this machine is commercial and it cuts its own thread if I want it to. And it cuts it kind of short. So it'll come on, the machine will easily come unthreaded sometimes. So by chaining this together like this, it's a lot less, you use a lot less thread. And plus, you don't, the machine won't come unthreaded. Now, I'm not going to do. I'll have to have 30. No, let's see. I have to have 24 of these for this 20 quilt, uh, 20 um, t shirt quilt because you'll have these strips are going to be four of the green wide, and you have to have one on it between each row. And um, so it's going to take, with five rows of shirts, it's going to take six rows of these strips. And I'm not going to sit here and sew together all of these. That would be boring and I would run out of something to talk about. But um, I am going to do a few of these for you and show you how that I sit, I start setting the uh, shirts together. It's late in the day. My niece does runs the embroidery machine. And she is gone, and the store has closed, and it's getting dusky dark. So I thought this would be a great time, and I'm not just about to pass out from being exhausted. So I thought this would be a good day to do it. And plus, I had the shirts cut out and. Sometimes it just don't land right to do a video on how to do this. I want everything to be cut and at least part of the quilt finished so that I can get started into the meat of the quilt. I haven't been doing YouTube long, and the way I understand it is, until you've done it to a certain extent, you cannot have very long videos. So, I'm kind of doing like one of those cooking shows. Have most of it have have one done in the oven by the time you get the one you're mixing up done. All right, now we're gonna cut these apart. That wasn't 24 of them, but it was prop it was half of them. And. I love chain sewing because chain sewing just seems like it just goes faster when you do all. But I would typically, if I was going to just putting this together without doing a video, I would just go ahead and do all 24 of these like that. And we're gonna set two. We're gonna put two together. We'll put right sides together. We're gonna put the, the charcoal on the end that doesn't have charcoal. This other end has got a charcoal with green. So we're going to sew these two together. Okay, we got an odd one here, so we're gonna stop. All right, we have we have pairs sewed together now, sewn together, not sewed together. My goodness, and we're gonna sew them again, and have it be four greens and four charcoals at this point. We're gonna sew right sides together again. If you don't sew right sides together. Then you'll just have to pick it out and do it right. And I believe you me, I have picked up a lot. 
And now we've got this tail end here, just like we did the shirt. We've got a naked, naked green end here. And we're going to put right sides together and we're going to finish off this end. So that now you will have charcoal green, charcoal green, char and you need to end with the charcoal. On each end we have this, the charcoal block. And in between each green, we have a charcoal block. So this is how this would look at this point. Okay, let's do one more. One more row of these. That's that odd one I had. And right sides together. I think I just come unthreaded. Yes, I did. See, I told you it was easy to come unthreaded. All right, and I'm just going to leave that on the machine. I'm going to pick up my end here that doesn't have a charcoal block, and I'm going to sew a charcoal block to it. And there we go. We have another one. Let me see if I have enough for one more or if I'm short. We have one. We actually only need one more to have three sets of these. Like I said, if you have five rows of shirts, you'll need six rows of these. If you have four rows of shirts, you'll need five of these. You have one more of these strip sets more than you have rows of shirts. Okay. Should get us right there. And I'm just going to go ahead and leave that on the machine and pick up the other two and sew these on right sides together. And then we have to find that little end that's naked. Here it is. It doesn't have a charcoal square on it. And we're going to sew a charcoal square onto this one. There we go. We got three sets. We would actually need three more. But I do not edit my videos. They are just raw, raw recording. <sighs> Tried to get my daughter to help me edit videos, but she's too busy. So all the mistakes are here and all the mess ups are here. Okay. As you can see, uh, this is be the first, um, well, you know, like if you have a certain order, you can either start in the middle or the top or the bottom, whichever one you want to do. And as you can see, I used the uh, strip that was cut on the fold for the end of my shirt here. And like I said, my shirt does stick out just a little bit, but that's okay. It doesn't stick out on this end. And if it sticks out more than this, then you've got a problem. But um, I wouldn't I wouldn't sew it if it was if it was down here. No, no, that won't work. That won't work. You either take this off, and you don't want to give, when you've got your shirt under the needle like this, and you, you just want to let it go through, you don't want to give the t-shirt a tug, a pull, you don't want to do that. You just want to let it go, you just want to let it go through the machine, let the machine do its thing, and do not put any tension on this shirt. And if you, as you can see, of course I've done thousands of these, but as you can see, uh, it lays nice and flat okay so now we're going to sew get pick up our long strip here with four shirts and and five of these uh green strips and we're going to pick up one of these um strip sets and we'll lay and at, at once again my shirt is on the bottom it is not going to touch the um foot it's going to be touching the grippers on the bottom, the feed dogs. And we'll match up our seams right here and put it under the needle. And here we go. You don't have to back stitch, but my, my machine won't come unthreaded if I start just a fraction of an inch in if I start my needle if I start sewing where the needle is actually on fabric 
and not in the air, then it won't come unthreaded. So that's sometimes I'll start a little bit in and backstitch, but that's not necessary. All right, we got to our first seam there. We're gonna pull the block to the next seam. And we'll match up. And on the top, when you're putting these rows together like this, you you may, sometimes you want to give your. That's why I, I I set the strips on the side in just a little bit from my pattern line, so that I can judge the type of t-shirt knit it is. But you want to be able to give your shirt just a slight tug, uh, putting the top and the bottom of these up. And we will get to that that seam. We'll pick up our next charcoal block and we'll meet up at the next seam on the shirt. And we'll do that all the way down. Okay, now, I don't know if you can see how well you can see this, but this is the part that I was talking about that I was going to do on purpose so that I could show you how to fix this. Do you see that my seams are not going to match up? They're going to be a good half inch off right here. So what we're going to do, we're going to take this strip set, this strip right here, and we're going to lay that out of the way. We're not going to, not going to take it out from under the foot or anything. We're going to get to the seam right here, to this, before you sew it together. And I use whatever is handy in order to pick out my mistakes. And it just so happens today to be a straight pin. And if you'll just start taking this seam out, and part of sewing is fixing your mistakes. So we're gonna take this side out. And always, always work from this cotton side, never the t-shirt side. It's just easier. The threads get kind of down inside of the t-shirt. But I mean, I wouldn't use an instrument, any kind of a instrument on the t-shirt, but you can pull, if you'll pull this, this side, you'll have a long thread. And then you pull this side, you'll have a long thread that's undone. It'll take just a couple seconds to get this undone. And then I'm gonna show you how to fix it when this happens. And, and, and the first few, um, t-shirt quilts that you do, this is going to happen until you learn the different weights of uh, t-shirt knits, the different uh, the different stretchiness of the t-shirts. Uh, this is going to happen. I've done this many, many times. I learned um, when I'm doing men's dress shirts, I started out, when I first started out, I couldn't figure out why my squares were so off. I mean, they was off so bad. And there's always an easy solution to that if you just, you know, put a little thought into it. But you don't have to because I'm fixing to tell you what happened. Most men's dress shirts has got that little pleat between the shoulders, right in the middle of the back, up high. And that is a mess waiting to happen. And sometimes a person doesn't have quite enough shirts to do the size quilt they want to do. And you have to use the back and the front of the shirt, cut a square from the front of the back. And my back square was just a mess. So I've learned now that the first thing I do before I cut the dress shirts up is I go through and cut that pleat. Flatten that pleat out. And that may, that fixed my mistakes. Okay, we've got this disconnected here. And what we're going to do is take it out from under the foot now. And we're going to go in a little further from the end than we were. It's kind of curled up. A lot of people say the reason they put a stabilizer on the back of their shirts is to keep that shirt from curling up. I've just never found that to be a problem. I just, I really haven't. I've never, never had the edge of the shirt curling, curling up, and they will curl up, but just take your fingers and uncurl them. I mean, really. Okay, we've got that song back on. And we're going to go back and see if this will, ma it matches perfectly now, just like that. It's perfect. And our 
last shirt. In this row, there we go. We have the first row done. Okay. What I like to do is I like to sew the top and the bottom of three rows. That'd be the row one, row three, and row five. And when I say rows, I mean across. Uh, row one across, row three across, row five across. So if you've got the top and the bottom sewn on throughout row one, three, and five, then you just uh, insert row two. And I'll show, you, I'll show you what I mean by that. It may, sometimes stuff like that can be confusing. I'm a show me kind of person. So we're gonna turn this one over and we're gonna do the same thing we just did, but we're gonna do it to the bottom of these shirts. And once again, can't stress how important this is, the t-shirts are down. There we have it. The top and the bottom of um, this first row. Now, as I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to show you how to put this sec this next row on, and you don't have to put the. You just since we got the strip here, we're just going to start adding the t-shirts down here. But I will explain to you what I meant by the third, fifth, the first, third, and fifth row all right we'll take the next row and this is where you have to be make sure you check but make sure you've got them right side up so this shirt is right side up this shirt's right side up and we're just going to lay it on top but you see the t-shirt is up we have to straighten this out all the way down make sure that our row doesn't get twisted and go all the way down till we get to the end of the row so that we can have our strip on top and the t-shirt on the bottom. Like this. So, and then this would be a good idea, and this is experience talking here. It's a good idea to kind of hold your row like this and just flip it up. And make sure they're both still right side up because it's a lot easier to check that than it is to pick out this seam that's going to be about 70 inches long. So that's just a little extra advice. So we're going to go down the exact same way we've been doing. We work, we're still working with strips. They happen to be attached to another row of shirts, but it's just it's just another it's just and this shirt to the strips. Now this particular shirt were, I think, soccer and softball shirts. And so some of them had a little wording on the sleeves. Well, I'll show you the sleeves. These are the sleeves. And the mother wanted all the little things on the little sleeves added to the quilt. And the way I do that, 
is I iron heat bond, the lightweight heat bond, the one with the purple label. Never the red label. Always the purple label. The red label, you cannot use it with your, it's not compatible with your sewing machine. It will gum up the needle. It will gum up, it will be a mess. Always use, you just need a, something just to hold it slot, just hold it temporarily. And I would sew, I would iron the heat bond on the back of these, and then I would cut them out. And then I'd add these little patches just in places on the quilt you know if, if all of your shirts have got a lot of wording on a lot of graphics i would just add them on the little charcoal squares just kind of kind of a scrapbook like look to it everybody loves it but uh, i made sure that i did cut all of these little sleeves off of the um off the t-shirts says this one says picture and bitch warmer state champs state champs and number 16. so when i cut out my t-shirts i had 20 shirts stacked up when they were cut and then anything a little extra i just kind of wad it like this into my bundle and then this is what my bundle looks like when they're cut out and ready to put together see that's all that's you know, you may have a basket full of shirts, but when it gets down to what you really need, it's just a bundle like this. Inside of this bundle will be sleeves just like this. And they're just kind of, to let me know, they're not part of the, um, of the squares. They're just little extra things. And that's, that's just the way I do it, and it works out well for me. Inside of each of these bundles also is the little note that was written out with the instructions on what size it's going to be, what colors, any kind of embroidery dedication that you want to put on this, there's a little piece of paper inside of here with who it belongs to, their phone number, everything about this quilt is in a, in a note inside of here. So when I open it up, even if this had not been a quilt, it's exactly like the one I'm working on right now. They weren't sisters. If this was just one I was pulling out blindly and opening up, when I open this bundle up and, and open up these shirts, that note is in there telling me exactly what I needed to know. So, without that note, it is a disaster. Okay, I'm going to finish this row right here for this video. And tomorrow, I will do a video on finishing. But, in the meantime, I'm going to finish sewing up my little strips, my little strips, and get all of those finished. And then we'll be ready to finish this quilt. Literally, if I hadn't been running my mouth so much... I would have already had this one put together, but it takes a while to explain as you go. So, I appreciate you watching. I hope this has helped you. I hope this will make you brave enough to tackle that t-shirt quilt project that you've been wanting to do. Some people just want to do it themselves, and that's fine. If you want to just know how to do it yourself, uh, you know, say that I did that, or I, I made that for my daughter. Um, you can do it. I have no doubt whatsoever that you can do it. Uh, I did it. And, well, I've been sewing for 40 years. But, I, you know, t-shirt quilts is a whole different ball game. And you can do it, too. Very, very easy. If you have any uh, any questions, leave them in the comments. Please subscribe to my channel. Um, give me a thumbs up would be really helpful. And also, hit that post notification bell so when any new videos come out, you'll be notified, hey, she's got a new video you might be interested in. Thank you so much for watching my video, and I come back, I will post another one tomorrow, and we'll have this quilt finished. Thank you so much.